um, read the preamble. Let me see. That um, as chair of the Rochester Select Board, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by Governor Scott as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and pursuant to addendum six to executive order 01-20 and act 92, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. In accordance with Act 92, there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with the temporary amendments to the open meeting law, I confirm that we are providing public access to the meeting by telephone, video, or other electronic means, which in this case is the Zoom platform. And all members of the board have the ability to communicate and contemporaneously during the meeting through this platform and the public has access to contemporaneously listen oh, and ready. if desired participate well, I'm on the, I'm the meeting, on my meeting now. Um, by um, yeah. either contact oh, the clerk to request no. the invitation to the meeting or find the links. Who's making noise awesome. there? Find the links on the um, on the uh, posted agendas. And um, <clears throat> we gave previous notice to that. And I am trusting that this time we got it right because we had to cancel the last meeting because the, the credentials were not correct. Um, is anyone in the meeting here, um, someone that has um, logged in from the, the credentials posted on the agenda versus an email link, just out of curiosity? I came from the agenda, not an email link. All right, good. So now we know it's working. And here is someone else in the waiting room that I know is testing that. So maybe that will work. All right. <clears throat> so um, here we are. It's um, 6.02. And I hear my voice echoing because Kinley is walking up the stairs with his phone. He's in, so it works. Um, does anyone have any additions to the tonight's agenda? And hearing none, I guess we'll move forward. And we have the minutes from the last meeting. And I found um, one small correction at the, in the very last sentence. Um, and um, it says that it would make sense for the town to work Marty and Kristen and then communicate to the Wades. I think we want to have the word work with Marty and Christian and then communicate to the Wades. So I, I found that one addition. I don't know if you guys found anything else in there that you would like to modify. No, nope. and if um, I did. No. Nope. So I'd move that we accept those minutes with that modification. Second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, good. We got those minutes doing. <clears throat> Whoa, the sun just went down again. Um, Sue, you're our guest tonight, and you're um, on the top row in my screen. So, all right, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, um, thank you for having me. Um, the White River Valley players have a small request. Um, you may have seen the parade people that were on the park, the stick figure people with costumes on for Fourth of July, and um, it, it was a real hit. People really seemed to enjoy it. So we thought we would repurpose them for the weekend of the Harvest Fair, where we're sad we won't be having a Harvest Fair. So we thought we would put them in more of a group, um, somewhere on a hundred on the park, and put a sign with them that says, um, uh, see, you, see you here next year, you know, from the White River Valley players. Um, and just wanted to get permission to do that uh, during during that week so that there's some time that that they're up there making people smile. I like that idea. I do too. Yep. Is I that, um, yeah. to do a formal park use permit for that or is that? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, that sounds good to me. What do you guys think? Um, I'm, you know, I'm on the park committee and uh, that's why I asked her to mention it to you because I thought she did have to fill out a form. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Might as well. I did, I did that before. I forgot about that. So thanks for reminding me. <laughs> yeah. We have a little time yet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll jazz them up a little, maybe change their costumes or something, but we'll, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, we'll make and, and you're talking about um, having them up there for like a week or something? Yeah, from uh, Monday the 7th to Monday the 14th. Okay, yeah, that'd be good to then just have it um, there and then picked up. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. As long as there's a time limit for it, that's fine. Yeah. I guess. Oh, yeah. 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 All right, thank you. So no over lo loitering on the park. Right? Oh, well. <laughs> Right. No lounge chairs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we don't even know where that came from. <laughs> and well, then it stayed I, there for a while. Yeah, that's that was the issue. <laughs> that was funny. Yeah. Did you ever find out who it came from? Uh, I did. No, I have some idea. Right? <laughs> Not at liberty Maybe to say. Somebody did. So, um, Joan, we're lucky we have you here tonight because um, I was going to have to read your updates last week, but now you're here to join us in person. So uh, you're up. I'm, I'm sure you're happy. <laughs> so, okay, I'll run through it quick. Um, first, um, on the Mendel property, the uh, emergency watershed program with NRCS, um, I wrote up an application on their behalf and so Oh, you're breaking up. Well, maybe even four. I've lost track of time. Are you guys having trouble hearing her too? Yeah, she's froze up on me. I can't hear her. I couldn't hear her. I, we can't hear anything from you, Joan. Uh, uh, what do I do? <laughs> well, you want... Um, I guess um, I could read what your um, what I have printed from last week's meetings, and then if you have additions to that, you could um, maybe slide those in. Would that help? Sure. Am I still frozen? No, no, you're not. Um, well, tell me if I freeze again, and I'll stop. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll start waving. <laughs> okay. So anyway, a uh, fund representative was going to be meeting with them sometime soon. She offered to just go down and visit with them, and in financial and and then find out the step, uh, the next couple of steps to figure out if they were uh, going to be able to give them a grant. And we should know pretty soon. I have not heard from Dean yet about uh, whether they've met yet. That's at least shows some some sign of hope that they may get some help. Um, and just still continuing to work with our FEMA field rep to get uh, reimbursements for our completed roads and for uh, to finish up the information that they need for the Brook Street Brook uh, retaining wall project, which won't actually be done until next year. Um, and there is some reimbursement for the work that's been completed on the incomplete roads. Um, that's still in process, but it ought to be coming soon, but I'm not even going to try and guess at a date at this point. It, it'll come yeah. when it comes. Um, same with the Bethel Mountain Road reimbursement process. Um, three weeks ago or so, I was talking to the person at VTrans who had to submit uh, a grant amendment application to the Federal Highway Administration because originally when they submitted uh, the estimate of the cost of the project, it was very early on and they didn't know the scope of it. So um, it needs to be increased. They didn't see that there was, would be any problem with that. But I have been hearing from other sources like through US Forest Service that um, Federal Highway Administration is just moving really slow these days. Um, so that'll come when it comes. Uh, also still no word from VTrans on whether they're gonna be funding any of their grant programs this year. Uh, if you remember, we had a couple projects we were expecting to do, and we pretty well, in absence of any further communication from them, which was last time was in May, um, we're figuring that there's probably not going to be a grant round this year. Uh, if I get any confirmation of that, I'll let you know. But it's getting pretty late to, you know, put yeah. out expect projects to be done in time. Um, discussions are continuing with uh, some landowners. Uh, associated with the Mount Cushman culvert replacement. Um, Frank and I are going to meet with one of them sometime soon. I haven't set that up yet. Um, so that continues. Um, Excuse me, did you see Mount Cushman culvert? No bids were submitted for the town garage stormwater project. And uh, I talked to WRP today and we're 
in agreement that it's just too late to try and rebid it this year. Uh, for one thing, probably a lot of the contractors who would bid on this project ordinarily are all super busy with home improvement projects. Um, in addition, there are a few other details that uh, need to be looked into that we didn't know about at the time of the bidding. And fortunately, the grant that WRP has for the work um, is good through 2021. So we're going to regroup in the fall with Cooter, find out what remaining issues there might be, and be prepared to go out to bid uh, in January or February at the latest of next year. Um, working still on the Henry property tree planting, um, that is probably going to be taking place next spring as well as this fall, because I did a lot of calling around to various nurseries, retail and wholesale. And um, it's really late to be buying six foot trees of any type. They just don't have them in stock anymore. Uh, I do have a contractor lined up, uh, I think. I have to talk to him again, but John Gorton said he was interested. Um, so, you know, he's a known quantity for us, of course, since he does our mowing. Yeah. Uh, meeting with him possibly this coming week. Um, just to take a look at the site um, and be ready for next year, unless he has a source this year for hemlocks, which um, I'll find out about. Um, the West Hill Bridge meeting, uh, Pat was there. So Pat, jump in if you want to add anything. Basically, um, there were two design alternatives that were uh, submitted uh, in addition to do nothing or repair the existing bridge. None of those, those two weren't really alternatives. So alternative three, they called it, consists of a precast, pre-stressed concrete slab bridge. And their estimated cost there was uh, almost $1.2 million. Um, alternative four, uh, slightly different, well, more than slightly different. It's a steel beam structure instead of concrete and with concrete deck. And that cost a little bit less than their estimate, uh, just over a million dollars. In any case, those two numbers are considerably more than what we are expecting to get from US Forest Service, whose funds, by the way, also come from Federal Highway Administration. Um, but Brian Austin from the Forest Service pointed out on our meeting that um, they had included a lot of pre-construction costs in the, the whole construction budget. So VHCB has to go back and recalculate the actual construction costs, which will be somewhat less, but still considerably more than the $650,000 that we believe are committed to us. We don't have a grant agreement yet. Um, so I talked to Brian about that, and he feels pretty certain that Forest Service will be able to come, come up with some other funding sources to supplement if the Federal Highway Grant Program does not agree to increase the amount. So I'll have more to report back to you on that hopefully in the next week or two. Um, then last but not least is uh, Cricket and I made a site visit with uh, Sean Kelly, the geotech engineer from the Bethel Mountain Road project to that spot on the Henry property that uh, causes, is causing some concern for a potential slope failure, maybe not soon, but possibly sometime in the future. And it was discovered pretty late in the process of the Bethel Mountain Road repair project, which is why it wasn't caught and something done. Things look pretty stable there now, um, but Sean ha feels a certain amount of uncertainty about what might happen in the future with, you know, big storms or a series of big storms like the one we had, one we had last year. So what I asked him to do is to put together a memo that describes a little bit of the history of how this thing was first uh, noted, uh, what he feels the issues are going forward, if, what the risk is, um, and what he feels ought to be done in the near term and down the road if, if it does appear that the slope is unstable. Um, and with that in our back pocket, if something mm, catastrophic or unfortunate does happen in the future, we've got all the information we need to go back to VTrans and say, okay, guys, <laughs> sorry, but you need to step up and help us out with this hope failure because it would be because they would fund it because it's, you know, would be affecting the stability of Bethel Mountain Road. So when we, once I get that memo, I'll forward that to you. Um, probably what's going to happen is they're going to look for just monitoring 
uh, which means putting a series of stakes across the slope with a string. And then once in a while, Cricket will go out there. It might be just you know a matter of a couple times a year to see whether things have moved. And keep your fingers crossed that nothing moves for uh, a generation or two. Um, so that's all I have. Wow, OK. Thank you. Um, in terms of the highway, we've been, they've been working away on the um, mowing, roadside mowing. And I know there's a few spots where it looks a little scarified by that. Um, I don't know if that's up to the property owners to go and touch that up or if that's something that um, we would go back and clean up some of those ugly stumps. But um, I guess Cooter's been on vacation, so I'll chat with him about that. The future we, we should probably go back and especially in front of people's houses i had a call on friday um and went to visit the landowner and he wasn't overly happy but he wasn't really mad either but um, when they chop those trees down and leave a five foot stump right in front of the man's house and they blow some chips on the lawn that makes a little bit of a bad press for us uh, I would think they need to go back and think about cleaning out some of the ditches too, because that could lead to some issues if, if a high water event happened. So I'd like to see some action on that. I know they're busy on Jerusalem right now, but they need to really probably take care of some of that because that could bite us down the road if they don't do something. Yeah. But it, especially in front of people's houses when they chop off three, four inch trees and leave a six foot stump right in front of their place. Uh, yeah. they, they probably should go back. It's not a lot, but it is some, and they could probably just drive around and pretty much do it as they go. But yeah, I, I would think they'd want to make sure those ditches were cleaned out. Yeah. Not leave a lot of trees in them. Frank, what type of mower are they using? Uh, it's, it's just a flail mower, uh, you know, a, a regular roadside mower, but, you know, it's like four feet, I think, I'd say at least four foot. So they're, they're doing, I talked with John about it. He said there's been a big learning curve, and so I wasn't going to harass him too much about it. I know he's busy up there on Jerusalem right now, but they're going to want to take a trip around when they can and just clean out those ditches. Some yeah. places they've you know, they've hacked off pretty good, but I know they have to do it every once in a while. So, you know, it's it's just too bad in some places where they leave a mess that they they should go back and just neaten it up a little bit, especially in front of somebody's house. Yeah. <clears throat> I would expect that bit part of the um, pre-winter checking the ditches and culverts and such that that would be, or before then that, but, Right now, their goal is to use that mower as much as they can for the, the period that we have it, and then they can go back and- Right, once they, the once they get over the ground, you know, I mean, they, it's a, like I said, it's a learning curve, but yeah. for them, and, and they're doing the best they can with it, so. And I, I think they don't have it right now anyway. I think he said that it was gone for a week maybe or something, and then they were gonna get it back, so they're doing some of the work on Jerusalem, I know. But. All right. Um, so then in terms of uh, utilities, we had an um, issue with the um, Gordy Merrill had a, a pretty significant um, leak in one of his apartments and um, has asked us if we could um, have a little leniency, leniency on, on his bill for that. Um, then Frank, had you looked at that and, and checked into what he had, what was going on there? Yeah, I, I did a little. I talked with Terry about it. <clears throat> he he kind of feels like we give uh, we need to be a little more aggressive getting word out to like people that have apartment houses and, and have rentals that are on town water systems. So they can do their own meter check to make sure they're not using any more water than they normally do. They can it, they're all digital so they can read themselves. Um, but he's, he's under the idea that anybody that has a failure, Gordy took care of his failure right off the bat. Uh, mm -hmm. He feels that 
a one-time waiver is is a, a good way to handle things and then they're you know on a warning system so that if you have a failure like that in an apartment or whatever if you you know they can they can get a one-time you know uh freebie so we've done that in the in the past i think most recently to the mendel property um that we do that so what did we end up doing splitting the difference with them I, th I think he, I don't remember exactly what Terry said they did, but they came up with an agreement. It seemed like it was fair. Yeah. And he seemed good, good about it. And he was okay with it. Yeah. No, I think that's reasonable. I yeah, think. I do too. I, but if it happens again, you know, then it's oh. their own fault, you know, once they're yeah. notified and that should be a warning that we put out to these people a little bit that, that do have apartment houses. And if they're not all, you know, filled up and working, then, you know they they should be checking on them now and then to yeah. make sure so at least it's a quarterly bill not an annual bill so it does get a little little wake up call but still yep. in a couple months you can run a lot of water down the drain yes you yeah. can all right so we'll um figure out with terry what's an appropriate adjustment for that i think splitting the difference is pretty pretty fair yeah. it's pretty fair yeah i do too that's what we have done in the past. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. our precedent. We said. It sounds like a good way to go. Um, excuse me, Dune. Yeah. Uh, could, so could I say that the board agreed, you, you didn't vote on it yet or anything, but could I say the board agreed to a one-time reduction in his bill? Basically, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Because we didn't really, it's not so much a voting matter as just a, um, an agreement to, yeah. yeah. Okay, I, thank you. I wanted to make sure I worded it correctly. Yeah. All right, we got that on there. Um, what else have we got? We had, um, boy, it's pretty, um, pretty clear. Um, we had had received a letter requesting us to read a, a letter from Paul Hannon regarding the um, his opinion on surveying Pine Gap Road, but that is um, that seems to be. Um, kind of a, a moot point as the work has been done on that and in our response was at that basically that um, there was not the select board was not required to resurvey or, or to survey a road it's, it's it's an option the select board has and seen as there was the the whole survey of the the neighboring tract of the forest service um, was pretty much definitive about where what we were talking about was so we didn't um, didn't really feel the need to be pressured to resurvey that road. So that's um that was a response to that letter, and that's all I've got to talk about tonight. Um, I have a couple other things on the yeah. agenda. This is an updated agenda. So oh, we're oh I'm looking at water. You're right. That's the old agenda that I grabbed for those notes. Here we go. Yep, water through. But oh yeah, yeah. We need to um have an, uh, a suggestion for an uh, assistant town clerk and treasurer. Um, who was that? Uh, Kristen LaPel. Kristen LaPel. And um, we worked with her on the um, election night, the other night, counting votes. And she seems on top of things and, and works well with you guys. This is something we'd need to, um, is this an appointment or is this a hiring? We need to her to fill out um, the job application, I believe. Um, she has. And she has. Okay. So um, there, was, I, there was a doom. Yeah. There was some talk about uh, some increased hours for her. Um, maybe Julie, you want to explain that a little bit? Um, well, Becky currently is only she's only able to give me 17 hours. And uh, based on the work that goes on through the office, um, um, I'm, a I'm asking for 25, if that's okay. I think that um, I'm sure you could probably use even more than that, but that's, um, I think that is, there's definitely work to be done and I'm not interested in, in um, burning you out on the job so i i'm in i'm in favor of that what do you what do you guys say yeah i think it'll probably work good 
Do, do we have a little bit of space in the budget for that, Nancy? I think we will have when Becky really cuts back her hours. Okay, so if we have if we have space, a little elbow room there. Um, I also wanted to point out that Kristen has taken an uh, I believe an accounting class um, to to better prepare her for the role. So I think that she is a good candidate, and we should proceed with the uh, appointment or hiring, whatever it is. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we also have a request to authorize Jeff Gephardt to access the Green Mountain Power Town's digital files so he can um, better analyze um, where we stand and how we can improve things. And I'm totally behind that. I'd, I'd move to authorize Jeff to have that information. I would second that. Yeah, yeah okay. I would be in favor of that too. Yeah. All in favor? Um, Oh, Jeff, do you have something to say about that? Yeah. I'm going to do it, right? The, the paperwork that was sent is actually to give me access to the RGMP's files, but it's the, well, some of it is GMP's files. The usage is GMP, um, but the rest of it is deals with Efficiency Vermont services that have been provided to the town. I think we're going to need that second, um, you know, if you want to vote on the GMP town digital files, I have tried to reach Freeman Corey. Um, he, I could not find him on their impossible phone list. Um, <laughs> and I sent an email to GMP and I just noticed uh, a minute ago that I've got some kind of reply. So I should have information from them very shortly as to who the right contact is and what the form is. But I would really like to get both of them so that I can oh, absolutely. Yeah. more readily uh, see where the town's uh, opportunities are. Excuse me, Jeff, I didn't hear what the other one was. Not, not all of it in time to write it down. I apologize, besides uh, GMP. It's a, to deal with customer privacy issues, the customer in this instance is the town of Rochester Efficiency Vermont needs a consent form signed. And uh, so that, that if, if the town approves that, I could uh, probably get on the horn with Julie and have her put in the appropriate address information, contact information for yeah. me and you guys, she would know what to put in for you guys. And, and uh, we'll go from there. And then I would expect to receive um, instruction as to how we do the same with GMP's records. Yeah, absolutely. I, I so I'd modify my um, proposal to authorize Jefford those records or access through GMP and Efficiency Vermont. That'd be great. Yeah. I also did uh, follow your uh, lead, uh, Dune, and took a look at the town um, plan mm -hmm. and um, Chapter X um, for uh, for energy. Um, I, it's pretty familiar reading to me. It's essentially parallels uh, the state of Vermont's uh, comprehensive energy plan from 2016. It's nice that it lays out specific goals for Rochester. Um, and I'm getting a baseline through Efficiency Vermont on how many residential homes have been assisted and how many um, commercial properties have been assisted. Now, this is different than than um, say the municipal level look at, at energy, but um, the town had, there are, and that's not a town formation, but there was a energy committee formed early this year. And so I volunteered to get in the middle of that and uh, would hope that with that, I can get those folks uh, working and trained and knowledgeable to help their neighbors make improvements as we go forward. Well, we're really thankful for your energies on this, Jeff. Yeah. We'll see how long it takes me to burn out. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> Drink some water. Yeah. 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 A noble effort. Thank well, you. I'll yeah. do what I can. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Jeff. I'm willing to give you a hand in anything I can help you with. So. Sure, and let me know. You mentioned a uh, walk through of the school. Uh, yeah, bring back those old poor me those old hard memories. Yeah, I'd like to do a, uh, do a little walk through on the basement of the town office too. I, 
I, I think we've got some issues there that maybe we could uh, save a little bit on the heating bill there. I wouldn't Most mind. basements are great opportunities. Oh yeah, that <laughs> one especially. <laughs> well, we look look well, at I'd the like ceiling. We really look at the ceiling plane first, then the basement, and then work towards the middle. Yeah, there you go. All right, so maybe we can get together sometime on that before winter and see what we yep. can do. There. Okay. All right. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to talk about tonight? Robert. This is quick. Uh, uh, I went down and looked at the uh, speed sign on the south end of town, and uh, I tried to find the model number on the thing so I could contact or look on the website of the people that make it, see if we could service them. And I couldn't find a model number, although it's been disconnected from its, uh, uh, from its power source, from its solar power source probably because it was unreadable. Anyway, if somebody can give me the model numbers, I'll be happy to go through the with the company and try to figure out how to service those things and get them working again. Because they work. When, when they work, they really slow when people. They work. They work. Um, so I talked to Julie about this, and she suggested I talk to Frank. So I guess this is officially me talking to Frank. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. I, I don't mind at all uh, trying to run that stuff down if, if we can figure out what the model numbers. Going on the, on the service, yeah. place, there's a bunch of different models. It's impossible to tell which is what. I yeah. believe have an inventory list uh, from a couple years ago um, from the con when the constable's office had all that inventory. So we may be able to pull, I see Nancy reaching for something right away. We may be able to pull that out of the inventory list because it was really quite detailed. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, if you can just give me that information, model number, any information on the thing, yeah. uh, I'll see if I can dog it down. And, and if it's a big deal, I'll let you know. And if it's easy, then it's easy. And that's the end of my presentation for today. And I, and I think that Tom Schnabel had expressed um, some interest in in being able to provide some support on those because he's he's good with that kind of electronic stuff. So um, he might be an ally in, in that. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Also, out of curiosity, who mows down by the river, the path down by the river behind the school? Does the school do that, or does the town do that? Um, the school was doing it for for Bill for the use of it, I believe. They always took the trip around there, but I don't think they're mowing. They're down to two people on the maintenance crew, I believe. So, and I don't think they're mowing. I think uh, uh, John Gordon is mowing the school, I believe. Yeah, someone walked through there with the clippers and cut back some of the encroaching branches, but it's it's um hasn't been mowed in a while, has it? Yeah. So is that a town project or is that a school project? Well, it's that not a... really. It's on private property on the um um Bill Thrillkill's property. I don't think he would um mind if someone um, went and did that, but it's not so much a town project that um um that's um okay. You put that out there. It's um. It could probably use a walkthrough, couldn't it? A lot of people use that. Yeah. Just well, luckily enough, that. people use it that it's kind of beaten down in the middle, so it's kind of self mowing. But it could use a little bit more. Yeah. No, it's getting like the park. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, if that's all, I'm I'm hungry. <laughs> Ready to go. Thank you all. Um, I um. I'm glad that we um, nailed down the, uh, the proper credentials for people to join. It's, um, I hope we didn't dis um, discourage anyone or inconvenience anyone last week, but I think we made the right decision to cancel it and, and we um, keep taking care of business and thank you all for coming tonight. Okay, we'll see you all next week. All right. yeah. Take it easy. Yeah. Good night. Good <laughs> Have a good evening. Thank you.